What's up, Toxic Hair? With uh, talking with Toxic this week, featuring the one and only Dal Sebius. So, uh, Seb, you were not uh, with us last week. Are you okay now? Uh, yes, uh, the loving embrace of Grandfather Nurgle has finally removed his moldy teat from my uh, face. <laughs> Essentially. Excellent. Well, <laughs> this week, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, this week is mostly 40k stuff. More importantly, our campaign that we will be writing very, very shortly. Um, like now, Seb, go. I win. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah. So we're basically just going to be talking about it, getting it all sorted out. And um, so, if you ever wanted to run a 40k campaign. Um, or anything like that, you can get some ideas from what we throw around, and that's basically going to be the show. Um, but since we are talking about 40k, we thought we'd uh, show some of the new releases, and also talk about what we've done recently. <coughs> Seb. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a few things. Okay, so first of all, new stuff. Uh, obviously it's the uh, Harlequins, so what I have up now... Oh, uh, that Seb can't see is uh, his new favorite model, the Solitaire. <laughs> now, God, come on, let's, let's not be like that. I'm just not a huge fan of it. It's like, it's a pretty cool looking model. The kind of, the effects on his jacket are pretty awesome. Um, the Solitaire is an awesome character, but I just, for me, this guy looks a little bit like he is a Homestuck character um i don't know i wish he was a little bit more mottled a little bit more um feeling have that little harlequin look mm -hmm. i know he's an outcast no he has kind of been fingered by slash and all that stuff but he's a little bit too trench coat mafia going on for me i definitely see what you're talking about now that i'm looking at it like the whole homestuck kind of look really seeing that right now like i, I was like not seeing it before and now i'm like yeah i see that <laughs> I I honestly don't like the effect on the cloak. I don't get it. What's it meant to be? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm sure uh, it's like a special rule or something. But if it's, I I I feel like they could have done the effect better by just painting the effect on rather than modeling it. Oh, it's, it's the hollow field. See, I feel like it would have been better painted on than modeled on. Personally, because. Just because, like... Because you can it, paint it. <laughs> well, if you can't paint it, then you don't have, like, this trench coat with some rectangles sticking off the back. That's true. But... It is the modern camo thing, though, isn't it? Like, very square, blocky, kind of tight and fully. Lots of things have that effect. <laughs> and, uh, next up, we have the plastic... This is a plastic kit, right? Because they had these models before, but they were, like, fine cars. This is plastic kit Harlequins? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything comes out new plastic these days, isn't it? I think. That's awesome. I mean, I personally, I've never played with Harlequins, and I don't see myself playing with Harlequins. But I mean, this is a nice kit. Like, I, that's that's really nice. And I think Eldar players definitely have some hope in the future of getting some plastic kit aspect warriors. These guys are awesome, and there's a decent bit of variety there as well, which is always nice. The guy in the middle, to me, the one that I have up, Seb, is like the six of them, and like the, there's like the guy in the middle with the pistol and the sword. To me, that pose yeah. is really funny. Like it looks like that, um, that, that <laughs> Mike, top. looks like that Michael Sarah like meme picture of him jumping between like, <laughs> um, like chairs or whatever he was doing. Yeah. Like where he's like jumping, but his but his arms are like right down to his sides. His guys are up in the air, but that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> Or he's doing like a horsey impression. He's kind of got a little clip to clop, clip to clop hooves thing going on. Or well, with but that mane that he has, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a, again, it, the, the, these kind of um, very appropriate for the Harlequins. Like uh, in the Mask of Vile and Path of Elder uh, books from the Harlequin shop, they are crazily uh, tumbling and, uh, yeah, falling yeah. and cartwheeling and all that crazy stuff. Definitely not my style, but uh, I do I do love the look of these models. Yeah, that is awesome. I think like they're just so flavorful. They're not a huge part of elder culture. They're an essential and obviously really important part. They're kind of death, jury, executioner, and historians. <laughs> An obvious combination. Um, but they're, they're, they are just flavorful and awesome. Mm -hmm. And they even have bikes, which is 
pretty yep. damn cool. Next up, we got these. Uh, the, I'm showing the red ones. Yeah, you, you can tell how much uh, effort I've put into knowing the names. Is this the <laughs> Skyweaver or the? Uh, there's those two names for them, right? Uh, you got Skyweavers. Um, the name of the file both said Skyweaver, so I'm not. Yeah, sure I think sure. I think there's just different builds of the Skyweaver. Uh, I thought they might they're, have had different both... names, but. I suppose they're uh, the same bike, they just have the different weapon on the back, but... Yeah, it, it's uh, Shuriken or Haywire cannons. And then... And they either have Star Bowlers or Zephyr Glaives. I, Zephyr Glaive I, just sounds badass. That reminds me of Dorelius and Associates, for me. Um, I, I'm not going to say anything from it, because the show itself like has a lot of like jokes that you only understand when you're watching the show, so... I'm just going to stop while I'm ahead. I get myself in trouble by talking about this. Uh, anyway, um, I prefer the, the black and like teal ones rather than the red red paint job. But they're the same yeah. model, so it's <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this is, this it's is purely the paint job. It's, it's interesting on the red, though, the way, way uh, I don't know if they're showing like a hollow field or just the way the, the, the mottled kind of it's burnt off, but it's, it's interesting, the difference between the two red ones. But, yeah. Harlequins are just cool. Um, they don't really form any kind of uh, standard formation. There are the HQs out there, the uh, Shadow... Is it the Shadow Weaver and the Death Jester? Which already, uh, sorry, Shadow Seer and Death Jester have already been out. But it's, yeah, cool and fun stuff for people to play with, Unbound and Eldar Goodness, and even obviously Dark Eldar, because all Eldar are kind of more buddies these days. They're Battle Bros. <laughs> Sorry, that, that's it. Battle, battle bros, not buddies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so that is new releases. Um, now let's move on to what we've uh, what we've done. Um, uh, how far back do I need to extend that time slot to get you into something that you've done? Like, if I say last week, last two weeks, last month. <laughs> let, 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 let's say roughly three weeks, probably. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. What have we done in roughly three weeks? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start because I've probably done, done clearly done the most. Uh, I have put together uh, three, possibly four of the sorcerer vicissitudes for my fermenters. The other one, uh, the the fourth one, may be a lord or champion because he's got the epic man reaper. These are my uh, putrid blight kings and gut rot spume. Uh, that Death said and Blood of Asheim very kindly got me for, uh, for Christmas, my birthday, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, but yeah, so I put together four single models, which are separate units. What have you done, Toxic? <laughs> I, I've done a lot of cheating, honestly. Um, I put together my ten Grey Hunters and I painted them to an acceptable level where I'll probably go and do a little bit more detailing, but. Um, all the rest is basically been cheating because the Chaos HQ I painted before, even though I counted it towards my goal, and the 20 Warriors, well, it, it took me about half an hour to find them, so that's something. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, whoa, 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 I'm going to stop you there. If we're cheating like that, I've got 500 <laughs> points, I've got 10 Space <laughs> Marines, i got a Lord, i got Spawns. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just going by the post that I did, you know, for my... 12k in 12 months, but yeah. um, I had to I had to fix them up because there's a lot of broken parts. But mostly, I just painted my space wolves, and um, I've um, brought a bunch of new models. I brought a um, the new Necron Overlord. Uh, a Does space he look skinny in real life. What's that? I haven't Does received it yet. Oh, okay. To me, he doesn't look skinny. I don't I don't see the how why he looks skinny. He looks just like a Necron to me. I think everyone looks skinny to me. It just the other guys in the armor just look a bit more beefy. I I just cruised through that. That was his, not funny. <laughs> <laughs> his um, his weapon though is what I love. That scythe. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I don't know exactly what it is, but there's a, cause like there is a scythe in the actual rules, but there seems to be a new one called a, a void reaper, and that's what I'm assuming that is is the void reaper. Is this kind of flat, right? I think so, yeah. But but yeah, I, the the Void Reaper though looks freaking amazing. Um, I can't remember the exact rules, like AP two, two handed, so like armor bane and like shred and then stuff like that. It's like thirty points, but it looks great. Um, I then brought the 
Terranid Swarm for the Terranids that I'm doing. And then I have a list of stuff that I still need to buy because my goal now that I'm really working on, obviously the end game is 12k, 12 months, 3,000 points, 4 armies. The end goal by the end of April is four 1,000 point armies, so I've made a list for each one. And the things that I'm missing, I'm missing a Calixis Assassin, is that how you pronounce it? Calixis? Calixis? Calixis is it? Okay. No, it's C U L E X U S. Oh. Uh, yeah, Calixis? I yeah. So I'm missing it's one all, of those. It's all pig Latin, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm missing a defense line, because I'm picking up one of them. Two drop pods. Two things of tomb blades. So how many drop pods are you going to have in that? I don't know, because drop pods get expensive, because they're like... Like, the drop pod itself, 35 points, but it's freaking expensive. So I don't know if I'm just going to have a couple of pods, and then I'll do the rest some other way, just to save on money. We'll have to see. Considering I'm paying for this, like, all out of, like, the bonuses, I make it work. Like, I'm really just... If I keep making my making good bonuses, then I'll get lots of drop <laughs> pods. If I start slacking and don't get as good bonuses, then it'll be less. Um, the Games Workshop makes you work hard. Yeah. <laughs> Still don't put in for overtime, though. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so two boxes of, of Tomb Blades, because they're pretty freaking amazing now. Um, which I gotta assume that they made them slightly better in the new Codex because they were sitting on a whole bunch of them back at the Games Workshop HQ, you know? <laughs> They're like, fuck, we made this model, what are we gonna do about it? Um, make them a little bit cheaper, make them a little bit better, and they will be sold. And I believe right now they're sold out online, so... <laughs> so it probably worked. Um, I want to get a Night Scythe, one Canoptic Spider, the Terranid drop pod thing, yep. and I need a Hive Tyrant. So that's what I need. It works out to be about three hundred and eighty dollars. So if I maybe get on eBay, maybe get a little bit cheaper, maybe closer to three hundred. So I got about two hundred to spend right now. So I'm pretty close. And since I have till the end of April to get all this done, I'm not too worried. But I'm pretty excited on my lists. I'll give you a quick rundown. My chaos list I haven't actually done because I just have all the models out of that. What's it called? The the strike force or whatever. So that I'll I'll make sometime. Um, the space wolf list is two drop pods with two lots of ten gray hunters. One with two flamers. One with two melters. Defense line, five gray hunters and a rune priest. He'll just be standing behind the defense line, and then a vindicare assassin and a Clixis assassin. And that I'll get into more because that'll be part of the story I kind of have going for the campaign. Um, the Necron one is two lots of ten warriors um, on foot, an overlord on foot, five immortals in a night scythe, um, six tomb blades, three canoptic wraiths, one spider, and four scarab swarms. And that's actually an interesting one. That's actually the new formation that they have, or the new detachment. It's called the Decarion Detachment, which is actually made up of formations, which is really cool. So it's actually the the re, uh, Reclamation Legion formation, and it also has a um, Canoptic Harvest formation. So it's actually two formations that make up a, deta a detachment, which is super cool. And the, the Reclamation Legion... Uh, it gives you plus one to your reanimation protocol, so I think it's like a four-up reanimation protocol, which is basically like a feel-no-pain that you can always use, more or less. So that's crazy. Um, I think it goes up to a four, yeah. Um, then my Terranid is basically the Terranid Swarm, so I've got a two, two squads of 20 Hormagons, two squads of 20 Termagons, 10 Gargoyles, um, Arcana effects in the Terranid drop pod and then a flying hive tyrant. So that that's the one I'm that's the one I want to finish first because that one sounds really fun. I'll be interested to see how it works. But yeah, Are you so just doing this that list just so you could have completed a Tyranid army before, before Savage reappears. <laughs> no, but now that you said that, yes. <laughs> I want to get the Chaos and the Terranid one done. <laughs> 
since those are the two that he was like playing with, like, oh, what, what should I do? I'm like, eh, I just did them both. <laughs> but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, you, it's you still have a drop slash sport pod problem though. Just, just so you know. It's just the you're, style. You're it's just my style. Like, it's I love like ha- being able to have those like units that are just like deal with me, bro. It's not come at me because I just came at you. It's like deal with it. Yeah. Like I'm right in your face. <laughs> you are all about in the face. I just Very I the see face. the the argument that I have with people is that people say that drop pods because there's like a reactive player and like a like you know as active reactive or whatever. So like if you're reactive, you are the one that's reacting to your opponent. Um, you know. So yeah. like what people say is that yeah, drop pods give you that you know, first strike kind of thing, but then once you're out of your pods, you're like a reactive player. Like, you're just reacting to what they do to you now. I say, oh, fuck that. <laughs> like, if you're, if you're, if you've dropped in their face, you're changing their whole strategy. Like, they can't, they have yeah. to react to you being in their face now. And, and that, that's the way that I look at it. But, yeah. What's the kind of player that just sort of sits in the corner wanking trying to summon demons? <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of player I've become. <laughs> Well, speaking of demon wanking, um, I guess we'll move <laughs> on to our campaign. <laughs> so, I've been watching a lot of um, mini wargaming lately. Um, that they they have a lot of because they have um, like a subscription content and they, um, where like they have like campaigns and stuff. And I really like the way that they've done theirs, and I'd like to follow a similar approach. The way that they do theirs is they do two missions at a time, so they have like mission 1A, mission 1B. The reason why they do that mostly is because one mission is for free on YouTube, one mission is in their vault content, so if you want it you gotta subscribe. Which is, I, which the main one follows the story, the other one's just like, extra. Which I think is really good business practice if you ask me, because like, I, I, I feel like it's completely fair, you know? Give the main story for free and then, if you want more, you know, give them three bucks a month or whatever. Um, anyway, we're going to be putting everything out there for, you know, our own enjoyment and entertainment for others for free, but I like the idea of having the two missions going simultaneously that could affect each other. So the way that I want it to be is kind of like a linear campaign where we have the, we have the two armies and then, you know, you can throw in ideas too. I'm not saying this is how it's going to be, but, uh, we have the two armies and like a main storyline of what one army is doing, what the other army is doing. And then we have one kind of main mission with some main characters, and we have like a secondary mission. Maybe, you know, and we might do, you know, two is, I would like the minimum to be two, but we could have, you know, three, four happening at the same time if we're really, really ambitious, um, or how the story progresses. But basically, we have a mission... We play that, and then depending on what happens, depending on which characters die, depending on which characters live, it changes where we go to. The next mission will be kind of known in 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 how the story goes, but it'll change depending on the outcomes. Now, the cool thing that I really like about the way that they do their campaigns is they have like main characters and like minor characters. So you have like your main character, um, who's like, because characters can die, like, in this campaign, right? So the way that they do it is, if your character's dead at the end of the game, you do a roll. A one, the character is fine. I think this is how it works. This is how I'm going to do it anyway. A one, the character is fine. Two or three, they're minorly wounded, so they lose, like, one weapon skill, one ballistic skill. Four or five, they're majorly wounded, so they lose one weapon skill, one ballistic skill, one wound. And a six, they're dead. If you're a major character, though, you have, like, a modifier to that. So you have, like, a negative three modifier or whatever. No, would it be negative? Positive, yeah. Yeah, negative three, because lower is better. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, so it's harder to to die. You can't just die by losing one thing. But if you're already in the fight, minorly wounded, that gives you a plus one. If you're in the fight, majorly wounded, that gives you a plus three. If you... Yeah. If you, um win the battle, but you lose, that gives you a plus. You know what I mean? If you lose the battle, and you died, then that gives you a minus. So, and, and so like, major characters 
can get hurt, but they stay alive a lot longer. And minor characters, like, you know, sergeants and things like that, they start off as minor characters. But if they do something really great and actually start becoming a character in the story, they can become major characters, and then they become, like, harder to kill and harder to, like, kill off. So that's how like, I would like to do the characters, is not have, like, a whole chart of, like, things that can hurt you. It's just having, like, the basic, you know, negatives to your weapon skill or negatives to your wounds, depending on how injured you are. That sounds awesome. So, for instance, we we'll basically start off with a, a warlord as the major character and then a bunch of sergeants or champions or equivalents kind of beneath them. So you sort of say... Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it depends on what the story is going to be. Because, I mean, obviously, like... My obviously like my um my space wolves for instance they're from Ragnar's company, but I'm not going to be using Ragnar because I want to use my own characters and stuff. Yeah. So he'll be probably the warlord in some battles, but I'll probably use not not Ragnar but like maybe like a wolf god. Um, well, actually, I might as well talk about the characters right now because here's the here's the start of the story that I was thinking of. Obviously, your ferment is. Um, got this way mostly for stealing uh what's it called from the space wolves? Uh Mjod. Mjod? Yeah, yeah, from the space wolves. So and that's kinda how they get not their power, but that's how they kinda became a thing, right? Yeah, they they, they steal it, mix it up with some nuggly brew and drink it and become mm -hmm. yeah. Mutated and epic. So my idea is I have an Inquisitor, right? And he is a uh, from Auto the demon one. <laughs> Auto killed the demon, guys. Um, and he has been looking into the recent um, increase in demons. Seb has recently started to explore more in spewing demons. <laughs> demon wanking. Um, so he's noticing a spike in, in, in demons. Um... Because before, like, the fermenters would, wouldn't have even been a blip on his radar. Like, that's up to someone else. Now he's noticing, this is what I need to kind of get your input on, like, tactics okay. and stuff. But, like, now he would be noticing, you know, planets falling or whatever they do, you know, and, and more demons and whatnot. Yeah, because the idea with me was we had a campaign a while ago, and the kind of, the fermenters were building up, and they kind of got stomped. <laughs> and they've been licking their wounds... And, uh, yeah, a bunch of half-mad, half-mutated sorcerers, uh, the Vaticicrudes, have kind of been shoveled uh, into them, uh, basically, for a gift from Nurgle. And he's just, they're just chatting out demons and mm -hmm. building them up, so they're trying to spread their kind of decay over a, yeah, yeah, an, an imperial system. And yeah. that's kind of their idea of where I am. So, yeah, so, like, this is picking up the interest of the, the Inquisitor, and he's like, hmm... So he looks into the background of these guys and like how they act and you know gets a bunch of information, sends spies, you know whatever he does, and he finds out, hmm, space wolves kind of shit the bed on this one, you know, like this. So he uses that as like a bargaining chip, like their honor, right? So he's like, because like you know they're getting this way because the space wolves have allowed them to steal this mjod, and they're like, you know what that what are you doing? So he goes to them and says. I want to wipe them out, you know, they can't be a thing anymore, they can't be allowed to do this. This is basically your fault. I need some troops to fight with me, you know, to do this. So my idea is, one of my main characters, Inquisitor, but my main armies will be Space Wolves, and they reluctantly, you know, go with the Inquisitor to fight them, because to make amends, I guess, for... Um, letting this happen. See, that sounds awesome. I love the fact that they're being forced to do it because, uh, as, as is seen um, in kind of the fluff and also in the Emperor's Gift, the Space Force Inquisition generally don't get along. But if yeah. it's uh, a matter of honor and sort of being told they need to kind of get their shit together. Well, that leads to one of my other characters a Space Wolf um, Death Watch Marine because. The Inquisitor's like, hmm, Space Wolves don't like us. Maybe if I can get someone that has had experience working with the Inquisition, but is also on their level, to come help. So I don't know how much it works with the fluff, but I want one of my other leaders 
to be a Death Watch space wolf. Like, he's come in with the Inquisitor and is like, oh, I'll, I'll kind of be like the, not like the translator, but like the, you know, like the, the he's from both, yeah, the mediator. He's from, yeah. he's from both sides. He can like, you know, like they'll trust him more than an Inquisitor. Even though, you know, the Death Watch is for Xenos, but I figured it could still work. Inquisition can pretty much pull anyone from anywhere as long as they agree, don't they? So, well, like, so. yeah, like what I've always like said is like an Inquisitor could tell a whole, you know, regiment of Imperial Guard to walk down to the store and buy him a pie, um, and they would <laughs> have to do it basically. <laughs> buy him a cherry pie and program it for him. <laughs> no, raspberry pie, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking more of a meat pie, but you know, for uh, our uh, you can't, people you can't program a meat pie. Yeah, but meat pie is delicious. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so, yeah, so... You're the skinny one. Act the stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> But, yeah, so that's kind of where I've kind of had... Because originally I was going to, like, just throw this out to, you know, someone to write some fluff, and I still have no problem of if people do want to write some stuff to do that, but his my idea is that um, before a mission, you know, Seven and myself will jump on, do a video, be like, here's the story, this is what's happening, this is what the next mission's gonna be. Then, boom, there's the video, then we go play the mission, maybe we, um, while we're playing, every turn we'll start recording, be like, oh, this is what happened this turn, show the field, stop the recording. Obviously it'll all be edited into one video. And it'll be kind of like a battle report, more of just like a this is what's happening. Post that. After that, do like a recap. This is what's happening with the story now. This is who died. This is what happened. This is gonna be the next mission. Post that. Do another one. You know, and so on. I am excite. Yeah, so it's gonna allow us to not just post a you know, a, a paragraph of text, no matter how you know well written or whatever it would be, but allow us to kind of, you know, explain the story and show how excited we are about the campaign and stuff. Um, and it, I think it's going to be better a better indication of how the battles themselves went, because obviously we're not in the same country. We can't get together and play these games, but we can do them on on Vassal. Um, and hopefully, I don't know if. I would love Gamecaster to be able to record it, but I don't think it will. So I'll probably have to do a little bit more um, editing, because Gamecaster is just so good at doing the editing on the fly for me. But um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. But yeah, so that's basically kind of what I thought we would we would kind of start. But yeah, what what I mean, what do you think? Like, do you have but anything that you would? This is sounding sounding freaking awesome. Um. Well, because kind of, because this is yeah, we're, we're workshopping ideas. This is not the things are not epically final, but um, I'm, I'm I'm really liking the idea of having my my forces split from the uh, the fermentals that are kind of mm -hmm. used in previous missions, which is like the the plague dogs, the which is the cultists and the space marines, with good old ribald Tanglefoot, the uh, uh, Nogal Lord and his uh, spawny uh, pets um, as one kind of force. Um, who are just kind of that they are the 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 trudging. Everyone, people probably know by now that I kind of have a weird beef with the Death Guard, uh, despite being a big fan of Nurgle and the Horus Heresy. Um, but they'd be the more sort of trudgy, Death Guardy, attritiony guys. Um, whereas the Sister Crudes would probably be my passion project. The, the the other kind of side of things, and they're just going to be crazy unbound summoning demons and probably probably having some demon engines to back them up uh, and guys with uh, maybe some obliterators and, and have some things just to kind of keep them alive <laughs> it's the way I'm thinking about it what? it's flooding, basically flooding the, the fermenters are going world to world knocking out defences and flooding the world with demons I think is the plan, just for a big party well the, that works with the the layout of the campaign too because you could, depending on how the story goes but it could be like the main kind of force, like the the marine kind of force, is you know doing one thing, like a more a more stereotypical kind of battle, I guess. 
yeah. while the other ones, so that's like one mission, but at the same time, another mission is more behind the scenes, kind of secretive, kind of, you know, like, maybe, you know, where 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 it's like the spawny guys and the demons and stuff, you know, so, but yeah, dude, I mean, depending on how the story goes, and, I mean, we'll both be putting input on how we, like, t the tactics and how, you know, armies and stuff would be using and, and such, um, but yeah, so like, the the the, the diff most difficult thing I can think of right now is thinking where to start. What would the first mission be like? How what like what is their practice in taking a world? Do they just full out assault it, or do they send cultists down there first to kind of wreak havoc behind the scenes and start revolts? And like how how do they work? I, I definitely think they there would be some kind of uh, insidious cultist threat. I think. Uh, I don't know whether it, a small detachment of marines would kind of uh, spread a little bit of Nurgle's joy and the, the cultists would rise up. I definitely think cultists would be a big thing taking over a planet. I think a good place to start would be a, a planet either uh, about to fall or, or, or in the midst of falling. Um, and that that is what the Inquisition and Space Wolves are kind of reacting to. <laughs> I think it could be... It's it's the classic thing that it's in so many different uh, sci-fi things. It's like the whole uh, reason between episodes uh, two and three that the, the, why the Trade Federation is so important in the uh, prequel trilogies. Yeah, I brought that up without being angry. Look at that, it's impressive. Uh, but like, it's, it's a linchpin world, I imagine. Uh, that is the key to the system, and that is that is yeah, falling to the joy of Nurgle. And that's kind of what sets off these warning bell warning bells for the Inquisition. What we might be able to do for the first type of thing is have a battle where it's majority um, like PDF um, planetary you know yeah. defense force troops against cultists. So maybe you have um, maybe it's a world that I don't know. I mean, this is not really how it works. But maybe it's a world that the Space Wolves kind of have close connections to. So maybe they have guys m might be already stationed there, or you know, because like they do have worlds where they have like relics on and stuff that they station guys to look over those relics and things like that. Like I'm this correct me if I'm wrong, but Azaheim is isn't actually on Fenris, is it? Mm -hmm. I I don't really know too much, but the, what I'm thinking of is one of the stories in the Ragnar series when one planet is under attack and they have to go get to it because the Spare of Russ is there. And it's just a relic that they just protect from there, um, but yeah. So they do have like planets, but maybe like they they have like a connection to it. So it might be majority PDF, maybe like a little squad of space wolves, and then yours would be like majority like cultists and things like that, you know. Yeah. May and then maybe like you know some of the guys that kind of whip the cultists into shape and make sure they're doing the right thing while they're on planet, and it could be like. Um, and that's how it could start off. It's like the PDF are moving in, and and because they're like, oh, this they're only just realizing it that this is there's actually chaos behind these revolts and stuff, and then that's when they see. Those are fermenters, you know, because there's going to be some fermenters sprinkled in. And they're like, this is a lot worse than what we expected. Cause it's one. Of, it's one of the things I I do love, and it does come up in the books, but I like. Like oh, this dodgy stuff's going on, and Jeff's gone a bit crazy, and mm -hmm. things are going weird. And like, oh dear, then they actually see like yeah, one or two <laughs> chaos yeah. space marines, and they realize how bad stuff really is. So like yeah, we could definitely do like the first mission could be like some city um, based like revolt where the PDF are just going in to kind of like quell like a rebellion, and then they're like. Yeah. This is actually worse than what it is. Like what what we're looking for. Uh, we need to tell the space wolves, and then maybe for the first couple of, uh, of things, it's just a tiny little thing of space wolves—the one that had already been stationed on that planet. Yeah. Because it's gonna take them a little while to get there. Well, cause I'm thinking about rules and things. Could could you have uh, inf like infiltrator? Is it infiltrator for both um, some some my fermenters and your space wolves? So like they they can only infiltrate after. Like say turn three or something like that, um, and they actually come come on after there's just been. Because I'm loving the idea of like for, for like forty or fifty mm -hmm. cultists versus like forty or fifty PDF guys, mm -hmm. and then sort of later in that kind of battle. We could yeah, just have them in reserves, but yeah, I was thinking I mean. for the first one to not have space wolves purely because I think 
the rules for the PDF were going to have to be Astro Militarum, and I think they're yeah. a little bit above cultists, so that's why the Marines yeah. would be the kind of... like Because it's probably going to be mostly like just infantry, maybe a chimera or two that you know got them there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then... But like a chimera when you don't have anything else, so that like you would have maybe like a small squad of marines with like a melter or something like that, or like a small squad with a flamer, and you know, and like that would kind of, you know, work out. But yeah, and it's I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like the first one will probably just be a, um, like one mission happening at once, but then it'd probably split off from there. Um. Unless, yeah, I think that would work. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's, this is the kind of thing that is kicking it off, isn't it? This is this is drawing the attention. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you could even throw in some spawns in there too, because it could have been like some of their um, horrible attempts at trying to, you know, nerglify things, and they've gone awry. So. Well, definitely, cause, because it's definitely part part of part of the fluff. Like, the as, as things go on, there will not be as many cultists. Like, cultists mm -hmm. start at the beginning, um, the joys. But when when the actual fermenters fully arrive and the meal starts flowing and they're prop, uh, <clears throat> the uh, cultists are properly anointed mm -hmm. in the meal, a lot of them die. And also, it would make sense that a fair few of them maybe turn to spawns as well what we could do as well to represent like it being kind of a revolt but also kind of like a chaos revolt is that some of your cultists like there might be like one or two cultist squads that just don't have any marks and they're just like the people where yeah. that, that like just like workers and stuff that are, that are just like man I'm sick of the Imperium you know these guys are not too bad and then some of your other cultists are like the ones that are more that started it and then yeah. some of them are like the ones that are like just saw it and joined in to the fights because it's kind of like a riot going on. Definitely, with the, the, one of the things I love about chaos is that it, even when things aren't specifically serving mm -hmm. a, a god or, or a mission, they are they're whipping up civil disobedience and revolt and just general craziness, which is uh, that that fits with that perfectly. So, like points wise, probably about seven fifty, but we'll have like a really maybe like a four by four battle. But like really enclosed and like not enclosed, but like buildings and you know, yeah, in, such, the, in the like, sort of, in the streets, like some broken buildings where like they've planted like kind of terrorism, kind of bomb attacks, kind of thing to kind of you know start things up. Yeah, and then uh, like that would be kind of cool. Um, a, no a couple of big things is that we need a name of the planet probably, because that's kind of have to be like. The something campaign is like what that planet is going to be called. But I'm terrible with names. Did anything kind of I, jump out at you? I, well, I was just taking a quick look at the the, the system which Ferris is in, and there were very few planets in that main <laughs> main thing. So it'd probably be someone the, the system next door that's more yeah. made up. But uh, yeah, it's a made up system. <clears throat> Magellan popped in my head, but I'm not sure if I've heard that before. I like the. But uh. Yeah, Magellan, Mega. I don't know names. Just any any kind of pig Latin is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, but yeah, I think that's and, and 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 again, like we have opened it up as well to um, maybe bring in some other people at, at times. I'm thinking there's probably going to be about five, six kind of stages to it. Yeah. So we're probably looking at. 10 to 12 games in total I depending on like how a, it goes I definitely would like a big ba a, a big big battle because I think 1000 points maybe 1500 probably as big as I've ever gone and maybe 2000 2500 some kind of final pitch battle because um, what we did in the previous campaign basically was we had a big battle at the end to finally rid <laughs> the planet of the fermenters, and that's that, that's I do like the idea of that because that's when the the larger uh, the demon engines and things really start coming into a, right. effect. Well, depending on how that goes, the planet might just get a <laughs> Yeah, 
<laughs> since yeah. we're going to be bringing some Inquisitors in. <laughs> well, the, see, the planet might survive. Just maybe everyone that lives on the planet might not survive. <laughs> True. Um, what's that? Uh, um, Galaxy and Tears kind of rings a bell in, in when it comes yeah. to that. Yeah, this is very true. But um, I want, before we finish, did you want to talk about we had our kind of preliminary uh, kind of test test match? It was our first kind of game of the year. I wonder if you want to talk about that. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, we had a was it seven fifty? Yeah, seven fifty. Yeah. Space walls with ins- with assassins versus kind um, of the vicious crude. Uh, Chaos space, no Chaos Space Marines, which were mainly I'll, sorcerers. I'll let you say more with that, because it probably has more of a special connection to you, since it was the first time rocking, yeah. rocking that. So, so it was the first time we played Unbound, um, and we only kind of realised this, like, halfway through making the list, which was interesting, <laughs> just because it was available to us. Um, and basically, I was running four sorcerers, all taking demonology. <laughs> um, just, And it was the first time trying out summoning stuff and I think I, I, it was about 410 it was like nearly about 500 points of uh, extra models I ended up summoning I think I had 5 extra heralds of Nurgle and 20 uh, plague bearers um, the only problem that uh, arose particularly from this mission was because it was purge the alien so everything was kill points um, now you may or may not know the I think it's, I think it's called sacrifice is the uh, demonology spell for summoning heralds actually does wounds to the sorcerer. Now sorcerers come with two wounds so some of my sorcerers were committing suicide to create more models to create more models which were killing themselves so I was kind of feeding the beast <laughs> in many ways uh, and just ro- rocking up uh, kill points for toxic. They were actually making nice little targets for my Vindicare assassin. It's like yeah. I, all I can think of is like they summon a herald and then they take off like their helmet and they do like the shake where their hair goes lusciously flowing out <laughs> as like the sniper just looking at them in his scope and he's like what a nice target boop and their head just explodes like <laughs> the Vindicare person was booping a lot <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm at, that's why I'm really excited to actually see how the um, the Clexus assassin goes as well because that, that's in my thousand point list I was talking about and I'm really excited to see how, um, because the idea is they're really expensive. It's 300 points for two models. But I'm really excited to see what, how much damage they can do because a well timed sniper shot can get you all those points back. Wiping out a squad with the Clixus Assassin could get you all the points back depending on what squad it wipes out. So that's you... my risk reward. <laughs> yeah. Well, because what are those, what are the optional rounds? Because. Th- those rounds are crazy that the uh yeah he can do d3 wounds he can make it so instead of wounding on a 4 he wounds on a 2 so it's wounding on a 2 ap2 he hits on a 2 up if he fails he gets a 4 up reroll um which is just standard um and then he has the ignore and vulnerable saves which you think is good against demons but since their invulnerable save is so low you're probably better at going the d3 wounds because it's like, eh, you have a 5-up save, you you know, would I rather risk you rolling that and then getting 3 wounds or 2 wounds and wiping them out on one shot? Like, that's, I was running the risk there more than I, you know, more often. And he was peppering, just pop, pop, well, popping heads and peppering. he wasn't sniping, like, he was, because you were hiding behind hills, so he couldn't see squat, so I actually had to have him running around shooting with his pistol. <laughs> Which does get the same bullets, yeah. Wow, it's a snipe. Crazy. It's a sni- it's a pistol with the sniper rule, so it's like a heavy pistol, I'm okay. guessing. So he was just running around with his pistol. <laughs> we had a kind of amusing situation because uh, my guys were like at the base of this hill, which he was kind of he <laughs> have climbed over, but because they were round kind of the the corner of it uh, on the slope, he he was basically cr- I imagined him crawling through the snow <laughs> on the side of this kind of hill. Like just poking his head round and taking pot shots at the heralds, which was just, yeah, ridiculous but awesome. When you're talking about a vindicare assassin, I don't think there's a, a pot shot. <laughs> <laughs> Every shot is precise and deadly, except for the shot against your flyer at the end of the game. That is a pot shot. <laughs> yeah, it would have been beautiful though to snipe that out of the sky. It's 
true. And I've, I've learned the bane of uh, drop podding guys and having the having everyone very close to your board edge is very difficult uh, for Helldrakes to, to really do anything other than maybe a cheeky vector strike. <laughs> While I'm thinking about it, this is going back to the campaign. <laughs> yep. um, what would be cool if at some point during the campaign we could get a game in that was... Um, Space Wolves versus Chaos, but it'd be um, Death's Head and yourself, uh, Blood of Asaheim and myself. So two sp- two amazing. Space Wolf armies like going at it against Fermenters and Red Corsairs. That would be cool as for, for yeah. a battle, getting like four allies into it. And uh, <laughs> that, I mean, may, a, well, okay, cool that makes me think. In in that case, like, sh- should it be somewhere? Basically, picking some kind of space between Fenris and the Maelstrom, then, yeah? <laughs> yeah, like, something like system. that. Well, they they all kind of work together, because, I mean, two Space Wolf armies, obviously they work together, but Red Corsairs have beef with Space Wolves as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, also, <laughs> Red Corsairs are, are, are the renegades. They they kind of help any, anyone. They're like the Chaos Buddies. <laughs> they may not do it with a, the greatest big smile on their face, but they do facilitate a lot of other... Uh, not chapters, but uh, cults and warbands, mm-hmm. which is cool. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's about it for today. We've gone over the campaign. We have a decent, solid base down. I think now we'll probably do a couple of quick words off uh, camera, and then just so we can get a little bit more nailed down and a little bit less of hmm, what about this name? Hmm, what about this name? Because <laughs> uh, that's not good uh, yeah. watching, but. And then I'm hoping that we can get a video out pretty soon of the story so far. Yeah. And it's probably going to start off with very little kind of said and mostly just like, this is what's happening. Hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, hmm, what could it be? What could it actually be? Like, you know, <laughs> kind of like that. But yeah. So fun times ahead, uh, especially if you like narrative 40k campaigns. So. Definitely, but I just want to say it's been it's been nice talking about new releases and having a good old hardcore 40k episode. Uh, kind of kind of nostalgic for us a little bit as well. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had funny thoughts just then. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny thoughts. I am. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Um, this has been talking with Toxic today. We have been talking about 40k and 40k campaigns. With me has been the one and only Darth Sebius. Tada bye. And uh, I'm Toxic. Check out alliesindex.com for more geeky gaming goodness. And have a good one.